Good evening. Welcome to our first video um, on our new GolfLondon.ca YouTube page. My name is Wayne Hufford. I am the social media manager and director of golf analytics with Golf London. Um, my partner in crime would be here, 
but uh, he's actually out coaching right now, doing what he does. So um, Johan Kinting, who is the owner, founder, and head coach, um, he, he's, out, uh, he's out teaching right now. He might pop in a little bit later, um, say hi in the chat, but uh, he's, he's at the golf course in St. Thomas at Iron Creek. So um, he, we won't be seeing his smiling face, unfortunately, but uh, in the future, that's definitely something we're hoping for, that uh, the both of us will be on here. And as COVID restrictions lift, um, that'll get a bit easier as well. Uh, just to want to give you a bit of a heads up, because I'm new to the company, um, just give you a bit of an idea of, of where I came from, um, how I got here. So Johan and I met three or four years ago, I guess. Um, both went to the same church. And um, he actually started, we, our relationship started when he started teaching my daughter. I have, I have a daughter now who's, who's eight now. Uh, when he taught her, she would have been five, I think. Um, and just kind of did it like a, a more or less an introductory um, lesson package, grip, you know, driving, putting, um, chipping, you know, fairly fundamental type stuff just to get her getting the ball in the air and getting it in the hole. And uh, I, I enjoyed the way that he um, explained things to her. I enjoyed the fact that she was very um, comfortable around him because up until recently, uh, my daughter has always been afraid of men that are taller than I am, which is a lot of men because I'm five nine, um, and Johan is six something. But uh, anyways, it was the first got time I'd seen her around another a man taller than me when she wasn't afraid. So that 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 told me something that there was something about this guy that uh, was was really cool when especially when it came to kids. And so uh, over the last past couple of years, we've talked a bunch we've had some kind of unofficial consulting type things where i've given some suggestions um bounced ideas off each other and uh finally got ourselves to a point here where business is at a point where it makes sense for us to start launching more of a social media presence and start getting into analytics and and, and more advanced topics that uh, can help our our clients and our students play better golf so um, that's where I, that's where I came from. Give you a bit of an idea of my own background. Uh, I did play golf competitively as a junior, uh, back in the early nineties, I guess that was I played decently enough that I did get to a point where I played NCAA golf. I had a scholarship to a small school in South Carolina, played there for about a year and a half. Um, it didn't work out. Basically I wasn't good enough. That's what it comes down to. Um, I, went down there, did the best that I could, practiced, you know, did it every day, went to school, uh, and I just never progressed. And part of it for me was being Canadian, playing as much as we did and playing from basically January right through December and only having a four-week break when I came home for Christmas. It was a bit much. Um, I burnt out. And I got to a point where I didn't really like golf that much. And so I learned that golf was a hobby for me at that point. But it wasn't what I wanted. I, playing competitively was not what I wanted to do for a living. So I ended up getting a math degree. Um, and then from that, I went and I worked in social services for the past 10 to 15 years. And so it's a pretty wide variety of of. of personality traits and skills that I bring. Um, so the analytics worked really well with the math. Having played competitively, I, I have an understanding of, of going out there and shooting a score and, and knowing or learning how to shoot a lower score, even if you don't have your best stuff with you. Um, and then the social services relating to people, helping people um, really seems to make, really seem to make a, a nice fit. So Johan and I talked just recently, and yeah, we decided we're going to go ahead and do this, and this is part of what I'm going to do with the uh, analytics side of things. And, um, and then the social media, you might have seen the social media has gotten a bit more active lately. That's the other thing that I've been doing. So what I wanted to do tonight, because I wanted to start a discussion um, about strokes gained um, and, and get into some more statistics that are not the traditional greens hit, fairways hit, you know, up and down percentage kind of stuff. And I wanted to do that because I really feel like it's an area where people can really start to understand where their game is lacking and where they can improve it. So we're going to look at the history of strokes gained. We're going to look at the most recent major P 
PGA, a major men's men's major at least, um, the U.S. Open. We're going to look at how strokes gained work with that, and then we're going to answer the question. Well, that's great, Wayne. Um, I'm not a PGA Tour player. I don't have access to ShotLink or any of the stuff that they have. How does this help me? So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at how we can use it ourselves to then have a better understanding of, of how to use the limited time that we all have to practice. How do we use that time to best, you know, to basically get the best bang for our buck in, in our practice time to give us the best chance to shoot the little scores we can. So let's start with the history. And I'm going to put links to all the pages that I'm using in here. Um, there'll be links to our socials and anything else that comes up, quite honestly. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll link that too, but I'm going to go to this page here and this will give you an idea. So the strokes gain golf, um, it's not the most, it's not the most, um, it's not the fanciest page in the world, but it gives us what we want. So the history you guys have probably heard about a lot about analytics in baseball, things like um, OPS and a war wins against replacement and, you know, just more emphasis on different statistics. Hockey's had Corsi and some other stuff. There's been a real push to really try to define more specifically what value a player brings to that team in that sport. And golf was no different. Um, so there was a desire to get away from the traditional statistics that were probably misleading at times. So it talks about it here, some deficiency of, of, of traditional statistics. Total putts, they give an example of one guy having an average of eight, or hitting approach shots, an average of eight feet from the hole and having 30 putts. And another guy having an average of um, being 25 feet from the hole and having 30 putts. And basically saying that when you say both guys had 30 putts, well, that must mean that they both played, the, they both putted the same, right? Well, no, because one guy was putting from 25 feet all the time. The other guy was putting from eight feet all the time. And so just number of putts by itself doesn't really tell you if was it was it a good putting round? Was it a good ball striking round? Was it a good short game round where the guy got up and down a lot and was chipping it to two or three feet all the time? The total putts doesn't tell us that. Driving accuracy is another one. Being in the fairway in and of itself doesn't tell us anything. If, if, if I hit it 200 yards into the fairway, or I hit it 300 yards in the fairway, well, ra I'd rather hit it 300 yards in the fairway than 200 yards in the fairway. That's a better drive. But driving accuracy doesn't say anything about that. It just says you hit the fairway or you didn't. Um, and then driving distance as well. I hit the ball 300 yards. Awesome. But where did it end up? Was it in the rough? Is it on the fairway? Is it in some guy's backyard? Where is it? Um, and so the total driving statistic they were using doesn't really solve that either because it just adds um, what place you are in driving distance with what place you are in fairways. Or, yeah, fairways and fairways hit. So they were looking for something better than that. And then greens and regulation as well too is, is another one because you could hit the green and be 60 feet from the hole or you could be on the fringe and be 20 feet from the hole. And you're going to get your greens and regulation stat is going to be better when you're 60 feet away from the hole but on the green. So in 2003, the PGA Tour brought out ShotLink, which is basically a radar system that they use, which allows them to then be very precise about where every PGA Tour player has hit their shot, what club they used, how far it went. And so it great, created this massive amount of data that a man by the name of Mark Brody, who was a business professor at uh, Columbia University, took and created strokes gained out of it. And so he's created, he started by creating a benchmark. He basically was saying that from this place, it should take you this many shots to get into the hole. And it's an average, so it's something, point, something, something, right? So we can go to where the house strokes works. So the benchmark is he was going by distance at first. And he started, if you're in the fairway, it should take you this many. If you're in the rough, it should take you this many, and so on and so forth. And then with putting, if you're putting from a foot away, it should take you one putt. You should one putt 100% of the time. 
I think we can all probably handle that one. A one foot putt, we, we, we have that. Um, a foot and a half, you're going to have the odd one that you just kind of yip it or you, something weird happens. Two feet, you're going to make them slightly less often. Get down to eight feet. Now, 49% of the time we're making it. Uh, the expectation is it's going to be 1.52 putts because 0.5% of the time, you're going to three putt. And we don't like the idea of three putting from eight feet, but it does happen. But that's kind of our, you know, eight feet, you're making about half, you're making it about half the time. Um, and again, this is from PGA Tour Pros, right? So this isn't us. But that's what they started to figure out. And so taking all of that, he's able to go ahead and say, all right, so Tom's playing, and he calls it Big Duffer Country Club, love it. He's playing black tees, and it's 430 yards long. So there's two things we need to know. We need to know how far are you from the hole, and we need to know what's your lie. So in this case, we know he's 430 yards from the hole, and we know he's on a tee. So it's a perfect lie. So we look at the strokes to hole table, and uh, it's actually in another spot. Anyways, well, we, I, I'm gonna, I'll link this for you so you can find it. And we find out that the hole to value is 4.05. So the average PGA Tour Pro takes 4.05 shots to complete a 430 yard hole from a tee, okay? So then, what's really cool about strokes gained is, okay, so we know if we make a par, we're making, we're making a very small gain against the field. If we make bogey, we're almost losing a full shot. But the thing that strokes gain will do is it'll tell us where did, what part of our game caused us to, to lose it. What part of our game caused us to gain. So we can then know what, what we need to work on. So we start off with a tee shot. So he hits his tee shot. Now the ball is 140 yards from the hole. And it's in the fairway. So he's hit it 290. Pretty cool. So you go back to a table, and from this place, we're expecting it's going to take 2.91 shots to get to the hole, or to, to get in the hole, sorry. So we've gone from 4.05 to 2.91. So the way that strokes gains works is we take that 4.05, we subtract the new expectation, which is 2.91, and then we take the shot off that we've hit. So Tom, in this case, gained 0.14 shots with that drive. So he's gained 0.14 shots against the PJ Tour average or against the field, which we'll get to in a minute. Which makes sense because he's hit the ball 290 in the fairway. You would expect he'd be gaining with that. Okay. Then he's, he's 140. He hits that in the bunker. He's 50 yards from the, 15 yards from the hole, sorry. So we go back to that table and we find that from that bunker, we're expecting it to be 2.48 shots. So now it was 2.91. Now it's 2.48. We've hit a shot. We end up with, we lost slightly more than half a shot. So we went, we gained 0.14 with our drive, but we lost 0.57 with our bunker shot. And it, little commentary is shot on the bunker was clearly poor. Yeah, from 140 yards, a PGA Tour player should not be hitting it in a bunker, especially not 15 yards from the hole. It's 45 feet. That's bad for them. Um, on the next shot, he hits it out of the bunker onto the green, 90 feet from the hole. Okay. So again, we go back to the formula thing. And from 9 feet, we're expecting to take 1.58 putts. So we were at 2.48. Now we're at 1.58. Take our shot. So we've lost a tenth of a shot against PGA Tour. So 9 feet from a bunker is slightly worse than average for a PGA Tour player. Okay. Then we run our put a putt by three feet. Um, so now we've gone from 1.58 to 1.05. So that putt lost us uh, 0.47. And then we make the putt. So we gained, we were expecting 1.05. We made it. So we've gained 0. Point, or 0 0.05 a shot. So if we look at our t the overall, we gained 0.14. Then we lost 0.57. Then we lost 0.1. Then we lost 0.45. Then we gained back 0.05. Overall, our score is a 5. We were expecting 4.05 from the T. We lost, so we should be losing 0.95. And if you add these all up, 
that's exactly what we get. Okay? So that's one hole. So then you do it over and over and over and over again. And on the PGA Tour, they have all of these statistics, and every single shot, they change their stats based on how many um, shots have you taken versus what the expe expected number of shots was. It can be a bit heavy. Um, math isn't always fun for everybody. I get it. The good news is, to use strokes gained, you don't need to know the math. This is just explaining how they've come up with it. But you don't need to know it. Okay. So based on all of this, they started, they started keeping track of all this. They've created new mar benchmarks. And they've gotten to a point now where you can start comparing your stroke. You can start comparing yourself against people with similar handicaps or a handicap you want to get yourself to. So if you're a 15 handicap and you want to get to a 10 handicap, you can start looking at strokes gained versus a 10 handicap to get an idea of what is it that you need to work on to give yourself the best chance to get to that 10 handicap. Where are you losing the most shots to that 10 handicap? And I'm going to show you a real world example um, in a little bit. Okay, So you can have a strokes gained handicap. Don't want to get into that too, too much. But this isn't something that just PJ Tour pros use. Okay, But I do want to look at the most recent uh, major, the US Open. So if we go to the US Open site, we see the leader. Well, the, I had the leaderboard up. So let's go there. We go to the leaderboard. John Rahm won. Amazing Sunday, fantastic finish. Um, we're going to be seeing those two putts he made for years to come. All right? He wins by a shot over Ustazen, and then the rest of the leaderboard. If we click on John Rom, it gives us a bunch of stats. What I want to get to is I want to get to full stats. So it shows us how he played 18. Amazing birdie. But if we go to our full stats, And I'm going to rank by position. It shows us the strokes gained. So for the tournament, John Rahm gained 15.11 shots against the field. Okay. So the middle, the average was somewhere in here. It was somewhere in it was between um, tied 55th and tied 57th. Okay. And so what that basically means is they, they, they've taken the average score for each of the four days, added them up. Rahm was six under on a par 71 so he shot 278 so the average would have been 293.11 i guess mm. yeah 290 293.11 yeah so that was the average score okay so he's he's 11 it's basically you look at this he's 15 shots better than average okay 4.23 of those shots came from the t so driver or whatever club he happened to hit off the tee. 4.99 came from approach shots. So any shot that he hit that was heading that was intended to go onto the green. 2.27 shots came from around the green. So bunkers, chips, pitches, that kind of stuff. And 3.62 came from putts. And when you look at these stats, what I'm going to remember of this US Open is those two putts he made. And I would think those putts are what made him win, right? If we look at overall, his approach play was the, was the best part of his game. And then off the tee. So his ball striking was way better than average. Um, and it was better than just about everybody on the board, except Morikawa was close to him. Actually, slightly better. But his putting was quite poor, so that's where he lost. Um, but yeah, he, he had a great ball striking week. And then he had a, a pretty decent near the hole like around the green and putting week if we look at num uh, round four where he won and he shot 67 which was wasn't quite was that the best round of the day it was close and they might have been tied best round it was so he had the tied best round of the day to win it's pretty solid we look at this his short game around the green he actually lost 0.27 shots to the field and that's even with that bunker save on 18 which was wild but he gained 2.48 putting he gained 2.61 with his approach shots. He gained 1.35 with off the tee. I'm not surprised by this number because those two putts he made on 17 and 18 were just outrageous. Now, strokes gain doesn't take into account how much those putts broke, which is unfortunate. But over the when you use you get enough data 
it'll even out and it, it'll work and it's we're talking hundreds of thousands of putts of a certain distance so it would have looked at how long was that putt and what how what's the expected uh number of shots it should take you to get into the hole from that place so he gained 2.48 putting but he still gained more on with approach shots so it still wasn't the best part of his game even though that's what we're going to remember we're going to remember those two putts we look at Ustase and he finished second and lost by a shot Again, this guy right here, what I remember about Oosthuizen is on 17, he hit it into the penalty area on the left, and on 18, he hit it in the rough. Um, the, hitting it into the penalty area in the rough made him need to make, uh, to get up and down from a fairly good distance to, to make par, to stay one back, to give him a sh chance to birdie 18 to tie. Um, and then he was down two playing 18, a par five. When he hit it in the rough, that basically took away any chance he had of getting to the green in two, which meant it was extremely unlikely that he was going to be able to tie. He had to, he had to hole a wedge, and he didn't, because you almost never do. So off the tee, he didn't have a great day. His approach play wasn't too bad. His around the green was mm, iffy, and then his putting was kind of okay. Um, but he, and he was four shots worse. He shot, so 67. For Rom, uh, Ustazen shot 71. He shot even par. So we can, we can get an understanding here of kind of where things went wrong for Ustazen and, and where things went right for Rom. Uh, if we look at our, our Canadian boy, he had a bad day. He lost 3.83 shots to the field. So he, he had a poor round. And he, his driver wasn't the biggest culprit. He only, he only lost 0.04. But the other three parts of his game, his approach play, his around the green, and his putting were all equally poor. And that's the reason why we saw him tumble down from a tie, tied for the lead down to um, tied for 15th. And so this rank here is the rank for strokes gained for the day. Um, so basically the, the, that day's scores. Okay. And so I just picked out McKenzie because Canadian... We were interested in that. Um, unfortunately, he, he started falling, and he fell pretty quickly um, to the point where they weren't really showing him. And yeah, the back nine was particularly rough. He shot 77, which is not going to get it done in the final round of a major. Um, so you're sitting there going, okay, that's great. We know that Mackenzie Hughes lost because he had a crummy round because he hit the ball badly, because he didn't, you know, didn't get up and down very much. We, we understand what the issues were with the scores. But again, I'm not a PGA Tour player. I'm not a PGA Tour professional. I don't have access to strokes gained, um, shot link, sorry. I don't have anybody in a booth lasering my shots. So how is this helpful for me? How can, I, how can I use this? And the good news is there's a bunch of tools out there that have their own versions of stroke gains. Strokes gained, and what I mean by that is they have their own collections of data that you can access without having to actually see the data to then give yourself an idea of what your strokes gained looks like and what your best part of your game is and what your worst part of your game is. The one that I used and still do um, I just haven't played a lot of golf lately because I've had an injury. Is game golf. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do when I was looking at tools to use is I wanted it to be either inexpensive or free, ideally free. And I wanted it to be something that would be easy to do. I didn't want it to be something that would get in the way of playing golf. And so game golf was the one I chose because there was an app that I could put on my phone. And when I was at my ball waiting to hit, I could push a button on the app to tell it what club I was going to hit. And it would use GPS to say, okay, you're here now. You're going to hit this shot. Um, and it, it calculates that. And then it uses all that to figure, it out, figure out what, um, what, what, how we did that round. So I'm going to just look at one round from four years ago at Oxbow Glen. Anybody in the local might know this course. Uh, it's a nice course. It, it's... It's a very much uh, it's inexpensive. Um, there, there's one. There's your bunker in the entire property. But it's 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 absolutely fun to go out there and play. And the people that own it are fantastic. 
So when I click on that score, it shows me how I did on each hole. So I birdied the first. I picked this one on purpose because I birdied four of the first six. <laughs> um, and then I doubled the last. Uh, this was in a men's league that I was playing in then. But we can, eat, we can also look at each hole. And so this is where things kind of get cool. So here's our first hole. So it shows us, and we can zoom in a bit. Uh, oops. So we're hitting our tee shot from here. We end up here, which is just slightly in the rough. And I think I kind of, kind of snooker myself a bit. But we know it, so because I've, I've hit the button here saying driver. And then when I've got to my ball here, I've hit the button saying six iron. And I guess I was punching a six iron. That's why. Okay. The game golf is then able to calculate the distance between these two places to say, okay, well, that's 296 yards. Uh, that's not a normal drive for me, by the way. I don't hit it that far normally. There must have been wind behind me, or I got a really big bounce or something, because I don't hit it that far. Then I punched a six iron up in front of the green. Then I pitched on with a wedge, with my lob wedge, sorry, and I had a two foot putt. So I'm a birdie. Yay. And then, since I showed you the good, I'll show you the bad. On my ninth hole, I hit my drive 244, crashed into the trees. Not good. Then I tried to hit a punch out of there, hit another tree, still stuck in the trees. Then I took less, uh, less loft, took four iron, ran it through, ran it right through the back. Then I took my eight iron, chipped it all the way over on the other side of the green. Uh, I was just in the fringe, so I putted from off the green, and then I made, made, finally made it from a foot. Um, so I made double. So um, that's, that's unfortunate because I'm four under through six, four under through eight, make double on the end. So this is fun. So one thing it, we can do with this as, as coaches is we can look at this round and we can start looking at, all right, well, where did things go well? Where did they go wrong? If we look at my fourth hole, the par three, I hit my, uh, my uh, approach wasn't great, but then I chipped in. So that's cool. It's going to be really good for the short game. Uh, but that's not something that we're going to want to be relying on either, right? So it's, it's understanding that that wasn't a great shot with a wedge to miss the green, but we did, we did, we did chip in. Um, and by the way, my handicap right now is five. So just to give you a, a sense of, of where I am with my game. Um, and we're using it because it's mine. And so I'm sharing my own information. I didn't want to share somebody else. Okay. So we, we can do this kind of stuff and we could use this and you could have a session with a coach and review a, basically a round. And so that's a nine hole round. We go back here. I've got an 18 hole round here. Uh, this is the last one that I've, I, I kept track of. And we can do the same thing again. We can go through and we can go through all the, the round and we can look at um, different shots. We can also look at decisions that were made. We can say, okay, well here, if we look at the first hole, you hit your drive here, you hit three wood to leave yourself 70 yards. Why, what was your thinking there? What, is 70 yards a good, is that a good yardage for you? Or were you just trying to get the three wood down there as far as you could? What, what, what kind of was your goal with that? Um, and, and we can do that on, on all the different holes, right? And in this case, it's fairly straightforward. It's a drive that basically was hit three wood as far as I could down there, hit a lob wedge on the green, didn't make the putt. Um, par three is not going to meet. So on three, didn't hit the drive very well. Didn't hit the second shot very well. Pretty decent pitch to five feet. Missed the putt. So kind of a sloppy hole overall. So we can start to look at this and start to get some ideas of where do things go wrong? Where do things go right? How can, how can we be better? Um, and, and what do we not really need to worry about? But that's kind of tedious going through every single hole. And it, but it, it's got value, don't get me wrong. And this is something, especially if you were playing a competitive round, I would want to do. I would want to go over this with you and look at, basically look at every shot. If I wasn't there with you, um, this would be the next best thing. I'd want to go through every shot and, and walk through the thought process on each, on each shot. And again, look at what was, what was good and what, what, what could be improved. But 
I don't want to do this for every round of, you know, I, I want to have a summary, right? So if I go to my insight, insights, and I need to do it again, now for, I've got all my rounds selected and I can do my last 15, my last three, whatever. I've chosen to go versus scratch. You can choose versus five, 10, um, up to 25 handicap in increments of five. But being a five handicap, I wanted to see how different am I than a scratch player. And I would have told you, without looking at this, I would have told you I'm not a great driver of the ball. I'm really not very good with my irons. My short game is quite good. And I'm an okay putter. That's, that would be my assessment of my game. Okay? Based on just me playing and my, my feelings of how I think I play. And when I look at this, well, my driving actually isn't very bad at all. It's only, I'm only losing less than a shot around to a scratch player with my driver off the tee that's pretty good that's that's really good i'm i'm I've, I've always been surprised to see that number i didn't think i was that good of a driver but apparently i am i'm losing two points so and sorry this is that they do this by strokes lost so this is kind of if this was strokes gained these would all be negative this is strokes lost and they flipped it they're basically trying to show you okay here's what you need to improve to get to the handicap you're trying to get to if i change this to a 10 handicap versus it would yeah, it's going to show it all as negative, except my short game. Huh. Um, because it's, it's basically a reverse negative. So I'm gaining here by being negative. That's how game golf, do game golf does it. Um, I'm losing 2.66 shots, approach shots. Not surprised. I don't hit anywhere near enough greens. I don't hit the ball close enough to the hole. I know that. I, I didn't need this to tell me it. I knew it. But it's nice to have that confirmed. My short game is actually even worse than that. That surprises me. Because I would tell you that the only reason I made it to NCAA golf was because of my short game. Now, maybe it's because I don't play much anymore. Maybe because, you know, I, we work for a living and we don't have the time. That, and we, I certainly don't play anywhere near like I used to when I was in college. I don't have anywhere. I, I played more in two months then than I play in probably three years now. But I still thought my short game was, was pretty good. I still felt like I got up and down a reasonable amount of time. I'm losing 2.74 shots versus scratch. It's my highest loss of anything, of any part of the game. It surprises me a little bit. Um, but when I look into it, it's true. I don't get up and down as often as I, as, as I would need to. And I get, basically, I don't get up and, and down as often as I, th as I think I do because there are situations where I, think, where I don't really think of it as an up and down opportunity because it's hard. But it is. It's still an up and down opportunity. And so, yeah, my short game isn't as good as I thought it was. And then my putting, I'm losing 1.65 versus a scratch. Eh, kind of surprised. I would have thought it was maybe slightly worse than that, but not terribly surprised. And then it gives me some smart tips. And so this was based on these bunch of nine hole rounds. Um, 20, 22 nine hole rounds and a few other 18 hole rounds in there. So, you know, probably the equivalent of about 15-ish rounds. So a fairly decent sample size. Um, and it was over the course of a year where I was playing every Wednesday evening. So, yeah. Yeah, pretty decent. Short game, it's suggesting that um, I need to increase my accuracy um, from 25 yards or less from the rough. And I can, I can get 1.28 shots around by doing that. So that's one area that where I could practice. Uh, putting from 10 to 33 feet, it's suggesting, is, is an area I would want to look at, and I can save a shot around doing that. Off the tee, it's talking about 400 to 450 yard holes. That makes sense, as they're getting a bit longer if you don't quite catch the drive, in, in my case. I mean, I can carry my driver about 260, and then whatever roll I get, if I hit it solidly. I don't hit it solidly all the time, though, right? So 450 yard hole, if I don't hit it solidly, I'm going to leave myself a really difficult sec or, yeah, second shot in. And so hitting those shots better has the potential to gain me 0.41 shots. And then this one I find odd. Um, from greater than 250 yards, I need to work on that. What I wonder about this is, am I trying to get it up as close to the green as I can? Am I making poor decisions from this distance, from in the rough? And my guess is I probably am. I'm probably not choosing the right shot, which is then maybe adding some shots. But it's only 0.35, so... Um, I, I would argue there's better places for me to, to be um, 
to be using my time when it comes to approach play like my irons but these are just some suggestions and we can get into this data a bit more um, and at working with a coach who understands this they'll be able to help you look at okay here's where we're really struggling so we're gonna go through that with mine one thing this does do is it gives you my club performance so my typical drive has been going 282 this is total after it rolls I, this course would get dry and the ball would roll quite a bit so um, yeah it's probably I, I wouldn't it, as a typical yeah if I hit it well I guess and then my my three would etc 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 this can be helpful for looking to see if you've got any gaps in your bag if you've got any clubs that are all bunching together you'll see that commonly with uh, with higher handicap players their, their longer irons will all kind of go the same distance um, or if you've got areas where there's just a gigantic gap where you know this goes if if, if this was if this was my pitching wedge for example my nine iron going 142 and then my pitching wedge going 119 that's yeah that'd be too much 23 yards is too much between clubs um but my i don't there doesn't seem to be a real big gap anywhere um and so that's good it's good to see that i don't spend a huge amount of time here only because i know my distances pretty well and i know I know how far I hit every club. I know how far I carry it. And a lot of this, again, because it's total distance, bounces and stuff like that. And there's going to be some outliers. There's a gap wedge here that went 142. <laughs> no, I don't hit the gap wedge 142. I, I did that time. Um, but I, I caught it a bit thin, and so it went flying. Um, and I got a bad bounce. And right, But that's not how they, this, uh, the gap, the, the, what it gives me, 119. Yeah, that's what I would expect my gap wedge to do. Um, and the wedges, it's a little bit easier too because the ball's not going to roll that much when it lands, right? And you're not very off. You should be landing on the green more often than not with these clubs. So, um, yeah, these, these distances make sense to me based on what I think, um, which is important too, though. One of the things that a lot of amateurs and, and higher handicap players are going to find is these distances are going to be lower than they think because we remember that one shot that we crushed. But we forget about all the ones like this one that went 192. I must have really got a hold of that one. <laughs> uh, we forget about that. We only remember that with driver especially, we remember the ones we really hammered. Um, and we're going to start talking, one of the things that we're going to do in the, on the analytics side of, of the business is we're going to be looking at club fitting as well. Um, we're going to be looking at, you know, driver and, and looking at what, what's the best way to choose a driver. Because a lot of people get shafts that are way too long and they catch it on the sweet spot once and it goes tearing down the fairway and they think this is perfect but that's only like one or two times out of ten the other eight times the ball's going everywhere and it's not going far small aside but that's something i'm definitely working on looking at as well um so yeah we can look at distance i don't look at it a huge amount but it, it can be helpful and it's something we would look at uh, for students using this because it can it can be a bit of an eye on a bit of an eye opener for people to realize maybe they don't hit the ball quite as far as they think they do um, and then that can help you make better decisions off the tee so it gives all clubs i usually just go straight to the driver um, i want to see how what how well i'm hitting a driver off the tee the majority of the clubs i'm going to hit off the tee is going to be driver i'll hit three wood sometimes if the hole requires it if it's a fairly narrow hole if it's a shorter hole if there's a dog leg i don't want to try to cut something like that but for the most part i'm hitting driver off I, i'm basically i'm hitting driver off tee anytime i'm allowed to <laughs> any time that I can um, and then of course in an 18 hole round there's usually four par three so those ones I'm not gonna with my driver and this is where I thought my driver wasn't great I'm only hitting the fairway 44 percent of the time but let's go back to stroke gained that's a misleading stat All right and I'll give you a great example this ball here is on the fairway it went a grand total of 192 yards so it went nowhere I must have I'm not sure how that one happened. I, 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 I basically almost missed the ball to hit it that short for, for, at, at my speed. Okay, so that's going to count as a fairway hit. And then we've got a wall up here. Uh, this one's maybe a good example. It's a yard off the fairway. What's this one? That's, see, I like this one. It's three yards off the fairway, on a, and, and the 12th hole at Fire Rock is a par five. Yeah, it is. Okay. Three yards off the fairway, 325. That's going to be counted as a missed fairway. 192 is going to, on the fairway is going to be counted as a hit fairway. So if you go by fairways hit, this 
is considered a better drive than this. I know which one I'd rather have. It would not be this one. Three yards off the fairway, I'm expecting I'm going to have a good lie. I'm expecting that I'm not going to have anything in my way. I'm expecting that that's a shot that I can probably get onto the green or very, very close to it. This one, it's going to depend on the hole. Uh, seventh and tear it out? No, not a chance. I'm not getting on the green from there. So this is where, again, I have to remind myself, fairways hit by itself is not a great statistic. Okay, It's worth looking at, but it's not a great statistic. My average drive is 271. Okay. What's alarming for me is I miss 26% to the left and 30% to the right. I don't have a consistent miss. And I have these red ones are kind of like foul balls. Um, 12 yards off the left edge. There, let's find it. Yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> 47 yards off the left edge. So I think this is anything more than 10 yards off the fairway. It gives you red. 36 yards off. Yeah, that's a bit wild. And then this is our champion. 180, 50 yards off the left edge. I'm, I'm, I must have hit a tree on six. That's, that's how that one happened. Um, but there's a good selection of, of foul balls left and right. And so for me, if I was coaching myself, I'd be saying, okay, we need to eliminate one side of this golf course. We need, and for me, I'd want to get rid of the left side. I, I see, I, I, I fade the ball. That's what I see in my head. When the ball starts going left, I start freaking out. And so I would want to start looking at how do I make sure that I'm not missing the ball left so that I can take this side of the golf course out of play and I can start knowing I'm going to be over here somewhere. Okay. And so that would be practice and it would be learning a shot to make sure that this is gone. Okay. Because two way misses are no fun. And some of these have happened in the same round where I'll miss one left and I'll miss one right. And when you're standing on the tee, and I know all of you guys out there watching this know this, when you're standing on the tee and you don't know if it's going to go straight, left, right, up, down, it's an awful feeling. All right. So that's, that's the, one of the things I really take out of this is just, it's just, just, it's an equally left and right. I, I got, I've got to start getting this more consistently in as part of the course rather than being, you know, as much as 40 some odd yards left. No, it's not the right one, but, and then 22 yards right. 45 yards so 45 yards right 45 yards left that's 90 yards in total and then add the 40 yards of the fairway you expect that's that's a hundred those drives are 130 yards apart we got to work on that so that's something i would be working on um and i would also be looking at when in the round are they happening i when i get tired i have a tendency to start really spraying the driver which makes sense because it's the club that requires the most effort um, so I'd be looking at that. How do I make sure I have more energy through the round? Uh, but yeah, that, these are the kinds of things that, again, really want to analyze that. Okay. We can look at, like, I could look at three wood. How good am I hitting three wood in the fairway? Not much better. Actually worse. Uh, but at least I keep it kind of in play. I've only got one that's really bad. Uh, the rest of them are at least within 10 yards of the fairway. So that tells me that if, if I want to make sure I hit one straight, I probably should grab the three wood. Because at least I'll keep it, you know, on the golf course. Uh, and then you, you could start getting into hybrids. and uh, But we're not going to do that right now. What we're going to do now, so that, that gives us some idea of, of giving us some, um, some stats of what we're doing off the tee. When we're looking at approaching the green. So it starts out with inside 100 yards. I like to start with... Um, where do I like to start? Outside 100 yards. Because inside 100 yards to me is short game. That's, you know, pitches and, and, and chips and stuff. So outside of 100 yards, if we look at it as a whole, they're counting this circle here as within 15 yards of 45 feet. So they're basically using that as, instead of saying green hit, they're saying, excuse me, how often do you get it within 15 yards of the hole? Within 45 feet. Which, yeah, it's pretty decent. And here we start to see 54% of the time. From inside, from outside of 100 yards, sorry. Not bad. Um, I'm short far more often than I'm long. So that's a trend we want to look at. Am I choosing the right club? Probably not. Are they miss hits? Yeah, probably. That's probably it too. It's probably a combination of the two. And then I'm missing left 9% of the time, missing right 12% of the time. So again, kind of missing both sides. 
And then I would look at my real outliers here. So this one was a driver. Okay, well, we don't worry too much about drivers. <laughs> I'm, that's, a, that's, a re, that's a par four that you can potentially drive. So, um, yeah, I'm okay with being 152 feet from the hole on that kind of a hole. Is there one where I've... Okay, here's a five iron that I flared way out there. 131 feet, so 50... Yeah. That's, that's, that's quite a long ways. Um, not quite 50 yards. 40... 43 yards so i missed the target by 43 yards with a, with a five iron yeah it's a lot um but again it's a five iron it's 187 yards so not the shortest shot in the world seven iron from 172 i must have been trying to muscle that one um long ways away so we, we again i like to look at the outliers and see what's going on here's a couple that are i mean that one's not even showing up it's so far short uh, some of these don't want to show. Again, driver, not going to worry about that. But then I can start looking. I can look at inside 100 yards much better. 66% of the time we're within, four, with, we're within 45 feet. Again, short more often than long. You'll see that as a trend for me. Left and right, similar. Only really have the odd foul ball here, and I'm pretty sure those were that word we don't say. Um, You know, the one that starts with S. Rhymes with Hank. But then we can start looking at, we can really start breaking it down. So if we go from 100 to 125, 84% of the time. So I'm good. I'm good from there. These guys, guessing I chunked it to come up that short with a sand wedge. Uh, yeah, I, in fact, I know I chunked that one. Purse toll, I remember that. Not a great memory. And then here, I mean, that, but that's the only one that's really, really bad. And then I only have one that's decently long. So 88. Uh, yeah, and I remember that shot, that one. That's the flyer. <laughs> I'm not sure how well that one went that far. But I've got one here that's five feet. Cool. All right. So we, we've done, we're doing all right there. Then we go from 125 to 150. Oh, and I have all lie types, all lie types too. I like to go fairway first. Let's go back. Um. So from fairway, 82% of the time. So what this tells me is getting it into this 100 to 125 yard range in the fairway is good because I'm going to hit good shots from here usually. Okay. When I go to 125 to 150, still 75%. All misses are short. That's a theme. I miss short way more often than long. Then from 150 to 175, now it's only 42%. So that kind of 150 yardage is where I start to really lose accuracy, which makes sense to me because that's an eight iron. 150 for me is an eight iron. So nine iron and then wedges, I'm pretty good. Once you start giving me eight iron and start getting into mid irons, then my actually starts getting worse. So here only 42%, again, more often short than long, and we're missing them all to the right. Every miss was to the right. And there's a reason for that. Um, I was playing clubs that weren't fit well for me. Um, they were too flat. The, the lie angle was too flat. And so I, my miss was always to the right. And that's something that we fixed. Um, I have clubs now that um, are far more upright, but I haven't played enough with them to, to get to see the, distant, the difference. Sorry. We go to 175 to 200. And we're not getting close very often now at all, but from that distance, we wouldn't expect to. Um, and again, all short, none of them are long. And here we're missing both left and right, but not horribly. And then after this, we're starting to get into areas where maybe we don't need to worry about it too much. I don't even have any. Okay. And if we go back to the one, we'll start here and we start looking at rough. Uh, don't have rough. Why don't we have rough? What's other? Eh. It's weird. I could have sworn they had rough. T, yeah. Bunker. What about rough? Must be other. Okay. So not bad. Um, if we go to bunker, it'll be it'll be horrific, I'm pretty sure. Don't even have any. Good. <laughs> Cause they won't be good. Yeah, here I've only had one. I, I try to avoid fairway bunkers at all costs. Because I'm I know I'm bad out of them. Um here, again now. When we're not in the fairway, now we're only 45%. And again, we're always short. 
So there's definitely some themes here, right? My miss is short with an iron. I know that. And the reason I know that is that's what I play for. And the reason I play for it is I grew up on a golf course that had out of bounds over the back of every green. Pretty much. And over the green was always dead. And so I learned to keep the ball in front of me. I learned to just hit it, plod it along, because I knew if I went over the back, I was dead. Um, and that's even though I haven't played that course in over 20 years, I, I still have that mindset. I'm terrified of going long. That's something I need to change if I want to get better. I have to risk going long because I got to get closer to the hole. And I also need to understand, too, that I don't hit the ball solidly every time. Okay. And so this is something we would look at for a student of ours, and we'd say, everything is short. Let's start looking at some of these decisions we're making. So we hit a gap of 114 yards. It came up 84 feet short. So 20, 28 yards. Yeah, 28 yards. It came up 28 yards short. So I guess I was trying to hit that thing 132. Was that the right club to be hitting? Probably not. Probably not. I probably need to be looking at hitting wedge or maybe nine iron. Okay, and when we're, when we're only seeing, I mean, even if we just draw a line here, there's two balls, well, three balls that are past pin. That's it. Um, we, we need to start looking at that and going, why are, why are we always coming up short? Why are we never going long? All right, we, we want to have a more um, even distribution around, around the hole. You want, we do want to go long a little bit. But again, understanding our course as well. If we are playing a course where this is dead, okay, fair enough. But these still need to get closer. So we need to look at why they're so short. And I think a lot of it is we're, we're probably overestimating how far we're going to hit the ball. Um, and so, yeah, we can do that from all these different yardages. Um, and if we just go all lies outside of 100 yards, not bad. The problem is that I don't get close enough to the hole, and um, I have too many again short. 26% short, only 3% are long, outside of 100 yards from all lies. I almost never go long. And I guarantee you that a lot of these ones that are here, it's wrong club, it's fear of going long, and they could all get shifted up. I need to get a bit more aggressive with my irons. And then the last thing we can look at is scoring. So, some cool things here. Um, I average... 0.43 shots over par per hole. I'm 48% of my holes. I made par. 10% birdies. 30% bogeys. 10% doubles. 2% we don't talk about. Um, and again, we can look at different rounds. We can look at date ranges. We can look at an individual round. Um, we can look at putting. On average, I take 1.75 putts per hole. 21 or sorry 29 percent of the time i'm one putting 65 percent of the time i'm two putting three percent of the time i'm i'm or sorry six percent of the time i'm three putting one percent of the time i'm not putting because they've chipped in uh par three scoring it's gonna give me i'm you know, i'm a half a shot over par i'm par threes i'm par fours i'm six tenths over and i'm par fives i'm actually slightly under par which at my level i would expect I'd expect to be making birdies more often than, than bogeys. So 46% pars, 32% eagles, or sorry, birdies. I did sneak an eagle in here, 4% doubles. Um, and so, again, the putting gives us an idea. This is a number here we want to be looking at. How often are we six, or sorry, how often are we three putting? We want to eliminate that. I want that to be zero. I don't want to ever three putt. Three putts kill you. And they're entirely avoidable usually. So that would be something I'd be working on as well. 6% is not bad at all. But I want that to be zero. And I probably want that to go up a little bit. But we go back here. We can see where we can gain shots with approach. A lot of it is hitting more club in the green. A lot of it is not being short so often. It's that simple. <laughs> And that's what I like about being able to look at this and then going into all of these other um, areas is I can start to see that and be like, oh, yeah, I do come up short all the time. Yeah, you know what? It might be worth hitting one over the back that I'm afraid of because for that one that I hit over the back, maybe I'll hit two or three closer to the hole. Maybe I'll make a birdie or two. Who knows, right? And so 
these are these are stats that we can use that can then we can help start to understand your game as a whole and help you to start to realize here's how you're here's how you can play better um here's what and here's what you don't need to work on so when we have let's say we have an hour of practice if we look at mine if i had an hour of practice i actually should be spending basically half of it with irons and wedges i should hit a few drives and then i should i should spend some time putting but driver i would barely ever hit practicing because my driver's in good shape this is the area i need to be focusing on and i probably need to be spending time in a short game area um, where i can putt and chip and then on the range i need to be hitting irons and the odd driver okay so that i would then be able to break it down and say okay well i've got an hour so i'm gonna spend I don't know, let's say, well, a third of my time will be on the uh, range. And of that, so a third of my time, say we'll spend 20 minutes on the range and probably 15 to 15 or maybe slightly more minutes is going to be hitting irons. And then the other two thirds of the time, I mean, the short game area. And again, probably, so 40 minutes, probably half an hour of that, 25 minutes, half an hour of it's going to be on, on chipping and pitching. And then the other, the rest of it will be on putting. That's going to give me the best usage of that time that I have available to me to be working on the parts of my game that I'm, I'm weakest on. There's no point in me just hitting driver. I'm already hitting driver pretty well. I, I, it does need to be improved a little bit, but there's areas of my game that need it more. Okay. So I hope you have found this helpful. There are other tools out there that you can use. There's Arcos. There's 18 Birdies is another app. Um, whatever app you choose to use is fine. Uh, if you come to us, we'll look at what makes the most sense for you. Uh, there are clubs, Cobra Golf. Um, there's a couple other brands that are starting to have Arcos already in it, uh, already built into the club. So if you already have it, we may as well use it, right? But this is something we're going to be doing with, particularly with the people who are looking to to, to lower their handicaps. We're going to be using this type of information to help understand how you're making the score you're making and what we need to work on to make it get lower, okay? So expect to see this. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Um, our Twitter handle, at, Gol at Golf London CA. Instagram, at Golf London CA. Um, leave a comment below. If you want to contact, contact us by email, info at golflondon.ca. Um, and if you want to call us, I should have this handy, but please excuse me. I'm not good with numbers always, especially phone numbers. Cause I just speed dial everybody now. Uh, if you want to call us 519-870-1562, all of that will be in the description below. If you have any questions, fire away, um, let us know. Uh, but we look forward to working with you. We look forward to helping you in your game. Please reach out. Please say hi. Um, and if this is stuff that you're finding interesting, please let us know, like, and subscribe, um, tell us what you like, tell us what you didn't like. And, uh, we hope to hear from you and we hope to learn from you. Cheers.